What's up everyone, David from DoD Media. This is gonna be a quick tutorial about Photoshop Actions. If you've just started using Photoshop or if you've been using it for a little while, you may not realize that Photoshop has this whole system built into it called Actions, which essentially are like an order. So you write down all of the lists of things that you need it to do, and then it can repeat that for you as many times as you need it to. So if you have a process that you're kind of repeating for all of your photos, like putting a watermark or a vignette or creating an RGB split or that kind of thing, instead of having to go through the process every single time for every single photo, you can just write out this order once and then press play and bam, it's done like that. So it's a really great way to save some time and also just to kind of get a bit more of an understanding of how Photoshop works and the processes that it takes to do certain things. So let's jump into Photoshop right after that intro. Okay, so I have a photo loaded up in Photoshop. It doesn't matter what the photo is. What is important is that for this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to do an RGB split, which we're then gonna create an action for so that you just have to press the play button and it will RGB split any photo you bring into Photoshop. So to get your actions panel up, it's this play button here, depending on how your workspace is laid out, which you can you can change it up here for essentials, 3D, painting, photography, all that. Mine's a custom one, but I think it's pretty much the essentials one, I've just changed a few things here and there. Uh, if you don't have that play button, come up to window and you'll see actions there. It's normally the first or second one, depending on what version of Photoshop you're on. Now, in actions, you've got your default actions, which are the ones that come with Photoshop. Some of them are useful, some of them are just utter crap. And then I created a folder called custom actions, which are ones that I've made. Now you can see I've got this RGB split here, and if I select that and then press play, bam. I made this just before the tutorial, so it's not really refined or anything. It's not the right order of stacking for an RGB split either, because I like to emphasize the red and the blue normally. But anyway, this was just to show you that at one click of a button, you can have an RGB split like that. So if you come back up to your history, go back up to the open, that way you have your image unadultered, untouched. Cool. Now, if you come down here and select this, this uh, square that's got the folded corner, the create new action, if you press that, you type a name for it, let's say um, RGB, whoop, RGB split tut. Cool, I'm gonna put it in custom actions and I'm gonna make it red because, well, why not? You can assign a function key if you want to, if it's something that you're doing like on a daily basis, an hourly basis, then a function key can be pretty handy because you don't even have to go into your actions, you can just go like F3, bam. All right, and now it's recording. You can see it's got that little recording symbol there. That means that every single thing I do in Photoshop is gonna be recorded. And that includes like selecting and deselecting layers. It's really thorough. So what we're gonna do is create two duplicates of this background layer by doing Control or Command J. So one, two, two of them, cool. I'm gonna click on the lock here so that it's no longer a background layer. So it's not locked, it's just a standard layer. Great. Then I'm gonna right click, come up to blending options. And in this blending options here, I'm just gonna untick red and blue so that it's just green left, cool. Then the second one, I'm gonna right click or you can just double click the thumbnail if, if you would rather. Uh, and I'm gonna make this one blue. Okay, and the last one, I'm gonna make it red. Great. Then I'm gonna select all three layers. I'm gonna drop down this blending mode panel and select screen. Now, nothing's changed because we still have the three main colors and they are perfectly overlaid. But if we wanna shift those three colors to get an RGB shift, red, blue, green, red, green, blue, shift, select the top layer and just move it over with the arrows, select the bottom layer, move it over with the arrows. And there you go, you've got a nice happy looking RGB shift. Cool. And now if you look at the action, the RGB split tut action, it shows you every single thing that you did. And I mean like everything. If you drop down this move current layer, it shows you negative 0.2 centimeters. You've moved that layer that much. It's, it's really precise. You've got every single thing you need to know. Why am I doing a Donald Trump? I do not know. So that's pretty cool. But what if you wanted to add like, 
some little glitches or that kind of thing. Well, you could say, right, the top layer, I'm gonna add a layer mask to that, and then I'm gonna select the marquee tool with M on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna grab a few lines like that, and I'm just gonna hit Alt Backspace, and that's gonna fill that part of that layer mask in black, which means transparent, so it will show the layers beneath it. And then let's say we wanna add another, another thing here, and then another thin one right above it. Let's do that. Okay. And then you do the same thing on the layer below that. Um, we're going to do a slightly bigger one this time. And then another one just beneath that that fills most of the window. Cool. And say that's the kind of the thing you're going for is just that little bit of inconsistency in a glitch in the RGB shift. Great. And if you're happy with that, well, that's cool. You can press stop and it will stop recording your actions there. And then when you press play, it will give you this exact layout with those layer masks, with those movements, with those RGB shifts, all of that. What you could also do is do shift control E and it will merge all of your visible layers. So when you're done, you can merge everything and then say you could come up to filter, uh, camera roll filter and then we could just add a little bit of extra treatment to this by making those blacks a little bit more shallow and cool and then let's crop it a little bit to get rid of those edges of color which are from having moved layers to the sides it's going to reveal them on the edges so let's just crop that in a touch say there and there and you're done. Hit stop, bam, all of that's recorded. You can scroll back up, minimize that, and then if you come back up, all the way back up to the very top of your history so that it's nothing's been done to your photo, come back to your actions and just hit play, bam. It's gonna run through all of those steps super quickly, much faster than you ever could doing all of these things by hand. And it's done for you just like that. Awesome. A good example of an action that I created because I use it all the time is a 2.5D prep action where it's gonna take a photo, it's gonna split it into two layers, it's gonna put layer masks on the top layer and it's gonna create a blank, um, a blank empty layer above that. And it's basically gonna have everything laid out and ready so that all I need to do is start masking out the subject that's in the photo and filling in the background behind it, which I'll show you how to do in the next tutorial. But by doing that, I save a lot of time because it's the same process I'm gonna use every time I do a 2.5D photo. I'm gonna separate the subject from its background. I'm gonna fill in the background as if they didn't exist and that way I can move them around and it looks seamless. And then there's an adjustment layer on top of that that's ready to apply any looks to it. Great saves me a ton of time. So there you go. I hope you found this useful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me, from me, from me at DoD Media. Leave a comment in the comment section and I will get back to you. You may even win something from my store. Check out my Instagram at DoD Media and I'll see you in the next video. Shh.